So now that we've established the similarities and the similar origin of caraphytes and plants, we're going to now start looking at some differences and looking how plants really diverge from their caraphyte ancestors. We'll entitle the next flowchart Derived Traits of Plants 1. And as we remember from our previous lecture, derived traits are those traits specific to one organism in question, let's say. So we'll say derived traits of plants, which are different than caraphytes, one. And we're going to subtitle this as the following. These are going to be key traits, so traits that all uh, organisms, all plants possess, found in land plants but not in caraphytes. So we'll say they're found in land plants but not caraphytes. So we've established the similarities, now we'll look at the differences, essentially. Okay, so, first and foremost, there's this very complex, very uh, daunting sort of way that plants undergo uh, their own type of reproduction. And that's broadly defined and termed the alternation of generations. So this is the alternation of generations. So this can be very confusing at first, but we'll break it down into small steps and look at how those small steps give us the big picture of plant reproduction. First and foremost, the alternation of generations is an alternation between two things. Plants have the ability to alternate between two multicellular stages in their life cycle. Two multicell stages in their life cycles. So this is not something we haven't seen before. We've seen things that have sometimes multicellularity and sometimes unicellularity within their life cycles, but right now we have two distinct multicellular stages that plants can alternate between. And those are the following. Plants can either present themselves in a gametophyte stage of their life, let's say. So this is the gametophyte or they can present themselves within the sporophyte stage of their life. And as you remember, phyte just means plant-like or some sort of plant we're talking about, this root right here. So now we're talking about the gametophyte, gamete phyte, and the sporophyte, the spore plant. What do each of these specifically mean? Gametophytes are going to be exclusively haploid versions. So this is their this is still a multicellular stage, but it's haploid in the type of multicellular stage it is. Specifically, this is going to produce gametes in this stage. We produce gametes via mitosis. So that's basic cell division, and that's how gametes are performed are produced in the gametophyte life cycle. Mitosis. Gametes, mitosis, haploid, basic gametophyte structure. The sporophyte side is a little bit different. Here, this is going to be an organism, a plant, that is produced by the fusion of gametes. Produced by fusion, the combination, the fertilization of gametes. And we all know that if you have the fusion of gametes, and gametes are of course haploid by distinction, by nature, you now are going to be looking at a different life cycle stage that would be diploid, as compared to the haploid life cycle stage of the gametophytes. So the sporophytes are diploid because they are from a fusion origin. In addition, the sporophytes, all of them, they produce haploid spores. And their haploid spores are produced via meiosis because they start as diploid and they have to create haploid spores. And those haploid spores can only be made, you can only go from diploid to haploid by a meiotic process, meiosis. Okay, so those are our alternation of generations. Plants can pick and choose essentially based off of the environment and different cues and different, uh, many different confounding factors that are going to allow them to choose between the gametophyte stage and the sporophyte stage of their life cycle. Okay, both of which eventually result in a large multicellular plant they were so familiar with. So that's our basic introduction to alternation of generations only in land plants. Caraphytes do not do this. They are not this complex. In addition, land plants also possess what we would consider a multicellular a multicellular dependent embryos. That's the key word here, dependent embryos. 
Now, caryophytes are green algae, and green algae, typically we think of algae as single-celled organism, okay? Sometimes we have red algae where there's multicelled, but caryophytes and most algae are single-celled organisms. Here we have a multicellular and dependent embryo of the land plants. Specifically, land plants possess a diploid embryo, 2N embryo for diploid, that's usually going to be con considered a sporophyte, part of the sporophyte stage of their life, let's say. So if we're in a two, if we're any time in a two N stage, we are in the sporophyte stage of the life cycle. Okay, so the two N embryo is specifically retained within the tissue. Retained within the tissue of female gametophyte. So a lot said here. Let's break it down in just a second. So we're looking at a female gametophyte, okay? And within this female, they're going to house a pregnancy. Essentially, these plants are going to have a pregnant life cycle in which they're going to house and retain within them an embryo that's developing, a diploid embryo that's developing within the female gametophyte stage. So the female right now is in this haploid stage, but the embryo that's developing within the female is in a diploid stage. So it gets very confusing very quickly, but essentially what we're saying here is that the female is the home of where development happens. So I'll say development here. Okay, so we have a lot of development within the female gametophyte. Now, because we have all of that de development, there must be a reason for it. There must be an evolutionary mechanism, a background, something that's driving a female for having this 2N embryo within its tissue or her tissue. And this is going to be because of the fact that nutrients, and this is a, a something we've seen before, especially in placental mammals, nutrients are transferred from parent to embryo. So that's a key here not seen in caryophytes anymore. This is very complex what's happening here. Parent to embryo, nutrient transfer through placental transfer cells. So plants themselves also have a placental mechanism just like more advanced organisms or higher order animals have. And they also utilize the capabilities of placental transfer. Specifically here, we're looking at not a huge placenta, but just uh, a several placental transfer cells. A good bunch of them are going to be devoted to making sure that this developing diploid embryo within the female gametophyte is getting the nutrients necessary to develop. And thus, we have a multicellular dependent. That developing embryo needs, needs to be within the female gametophyte for these nutrients that will be received through placental transfer cells. And then finally, um, we can specifically term this uh, the fact that in land plants, we don't even need to say placental transfer cells. We actually have a specific name. And that specific name is the uh, embryophytes. So there are going to be embryophytes devoted to plant-like uh, embryo uh, mechanisms and uh, abilities and functions devoted to developing a diploid embryo within them. So two major, sometimes confusing, very complex characteristics not seen in caryophytes and seen in all land plants. So that's our first set of derived traits only in land plants, not caryophytes, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.